Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I want to discuss one of my commercial grade builds. I've just finished this build and I've been getting more and more messages lately from guys that want to see what a commercial grade build looks like when it's done correctly. Um, I'm not saying my way is the only way to do it correctly, but I'm going to tell you right now what you're about to see, you've probably never seen before and certainly not on YouTube. I've never seen it before on YouTube. So again, everything you're about to see is proprietary my own design. Um, right down to the graphics and guys let me tell you the level of detail with these systems that I go through the graphics that you see are not only printed by me designed by me but they're also over laminated with 3m 8518 which is used by NASCAR which means they're chemical proof fuel proof they're ready to go they'll last basically as long as the enclosure itself um, that being said um, before I cover the price of this system because I know I'm going to get asked about that as well this motor you see right here is a NEMA 42 motor. The client required two of those NEMA 42s and one of my 600 ounces to propel his system because he's using it for a plasma system that actually incorporates a transmission. Again, uh, he's replacing servos. Now guys, I've answered so many questions on servos versus steppers, it's not even funny, but this individual is replacing, them, replacing his $1,100 each servos with NEMA 42s. And these NEMA 42s, just to let you know, they are no joke. 3,830 ounce inch units a piece, okay? Um, that being said, to give you an idea in scale, this is a NEMA 23 600 ounce. This is a 600 ounce that he's also getting. This is for a Z axis. And these are gonna propel his table. Now look at the size difference. Give you an idea of size, I'll just give you an idea of weight. NEMA 42s weight 36 pounds a piece. They are no joke, guys. They are serious motors. They need to be set up correctly or you will get hurt physically or it could damage your table. It could probably kill somebody very easily. So again, this is serious. This system is serious from point A to point B. That being said, um, as far as the enclosure goes, I'm just gonna cover each part in detail. If you're not into watching a whole video that's long, I suggest you turn it off because I'm gonna cover a lot of details here. This system, just to start off, utilizes a 20 by 16 by eight enclosure. It's a Weidman UL listed enclosure. No corners have been cut. Um, that being said, um, I will cover the price at the end of the video because I know I'm gonna get asked on that a lot. I'm gonna open the door now and show you the build, okay? First, foremost, the drivers we chose, Gecko G203V Vampire Drives. These drives are virtually indestructible. Again, one year Gecko warranty, bulletproof in design. Um, they are a digital stepper driver, amazing performance. And again, now I'm gonna cover in detail what makes this a pro-grade system versus you know, what you typically see. This system is designed for ease of serviceability. And when I say ease of serviceability, I'll let you guys be the judge. What you see here with your fan cooling system, thumb screw mounted. Fan up on top, thumb screw mounted. You're using a, a pull push design, meaning that the air, in, air intake comes in here. It's going to blow over the actual uh, heat sink with the drives on it, and it's going to come up here, ricochet off the back of the box, and then come out here. You can see that the 72 volt power supply is mounted on top of the unit, and the reason it is is because we know heat rises. So again, you can also see where the extraction fan is placed right near the fan for the actual power supply. Is that heat that's coming out of that unit will come out. And again, guys, this is, this is a 1200 watt unit. It's absolutely no joke. I mean, you're talking a lot of power here. We're looking at 16 and a half amps. It's just massive. So again, you definitely need your air not only circulating over the drives, but we need air actually leaving the chassis. Okay, the next thing I want to point out is you have two other power supplies. We have a small 5 volt power supply, which actually powers our breakout board. It's actually mounted modularly underneath the heat sink. It's an OEM heat sink from Gecko, which again is also thumb screw mounted. Um, the thumb nuts allow for modular design. Thumb nut mounted for your actual heat sink allows drives to be removed in seconds, along with the terminals for your earth ground, along with your uh, power distribution blocks for both positive and calm and along with your common terminal for your breakout board so no daisy chaining was done, okay? So think about that for a minute. Everything here that you see is utilizing thumb nuts. So you can actually dis dismantle this board virtually with no screwdrivers. Minus the fact that the terminal blocks on the drives themselves require screwdrivers just to, to actually terminalize drives, 
this whole system can be serviced in minutes. The other thing to pay close attention to, and just so you know, I will bring the camera in close to show you everything because, uh, again, I've got the camera set up on a stabilized table, so I'm not making you dizzy as I'm covering this, but I'm just trying to cover all the key points because there is a lot. You can see up here where it's labeled and it says positive and calm for the power supply. There are two terminals. Once again, this is my own proprietary design. It utilizes the screw blocks. For your terminal mounts there, this power supply can be replaced in minutes. Once this motherboard is released, you can see that the base plate, and I'm calling it a motherboard, but it's a base plate for the chassis. It has four screws, one, two, three, four on each corner. Once you remove the actual nut from there, this entire plate comes out. That being said, I'm going to just move the camera now and let it focus up on top. You can see our AC block, which is our splitter. It's also mounted utilizing two thumb nuts. That splitter block allows for all of your power supplies with the wiring harness. And again, you can see I didn't even cut corners there. I actually fabricated a wire loom, so each wire is separate. It actually allows you to unscrew that with the thumb nuts, unscrew those three terminals, and you don't need to disturb your switch, your fuse, or anything, and just remove the entire modular assembly so you can replace whatever components you need to or work on the unit outside the enclosure. Now, that being said, you can see the graphics that were done, okay? And when I say graphics, guys, right down to the breakout board wiring schematic. I'm gonna cover that in more detail later. But what I wanna cover now, just to give you a breakdown, again, we, do, we are using a 72 volt, 1200 watt unit to power the drives on top of the five volt unit that's powering the breakout board and of course the 48 volt unit powering the cooling system. The other thing I want to point out as far as protection from EMI, because I get questions on that constantly. You know, my system's doing weird things. I don't know why I'm getting weird e-stops and, you know, different problems with e-stops and, you know, switches are getting triggered, home switches are going off by themselves. Let me tell you what I did with this system, okay? What you see here in this heat shrink that looks like heat shrink, it's actually military grade heat shrink with a conductive cloth inside of it that is used to EMI shield once terminated properly, which of course it is, and it's connected. Each, each drain is connected to the earth ground terminal right here, and it allows me to use silicone wire for all of the wiring done for the drives. I choose silicone wire because of course it's extremely flexible, extremely heat resistant, and on top of that, the flexibility by far is better than any other wire you can deal with. So again, just to give you an idea of just the cost of this heat shrink, it's about five to eight dollars a foot. It's a five to eight dollars easily a foot. Um, it's not cheap, but it guarantees that every signal coming in here is clean. On top of the fact that when you look up here at our e-stop, I also used copper tape and hand shielded this in copper tape and terminated it also to the earth ground terminal. And the reason I did that with a system like this in a large enclosure, when you have this kind of power going through it, it's much better to be safe than sorry. And once again, this client is expecting as close to perfection as possible, and I'm not gonna leave them hanging. I did it the right way. Again, it takes time to do that. It's definitely not a fast process, but if it's done correctly, it works amazingly well. And again, using copper foil, there are no, <laughs> no excuses for EMI. Uh, and just to let you know, the copper foil I used is 3M grade. So everything I use in this chassis right down to the wire tie posts are 3M grade, okay? No games are played. Everything is the best for that reason so that you know you've got peace of mind when, you know, again, I'm dealing with a corporation or in your case, your business, whoever that may be. Everything I use in my G540 boxes are actually used here. You can see the Sanyo 60 mil, um, 60 mil by 38 mil cooling fans. These are 60 CFM industrial rated fans. You got one on the bottom again air intake and and then of course the um the actual evacuation fan again is the same exact fan so again you have air coming in air going out this unit will never get hot on top of using the massive heat sink from gecko i'm going to let you guys just see how big that is you can see just how large that those fins are underneath you can see that the resistor is installed for our 600 ounce motor okay which is for the z the other two drives are running free 
That means there's no resistor because those massive monster NEMA 42s don't require a resistor. Okay, they're never ever going to get that hot. Up here, you could see that we actually used a DB25 cable as an extension for the breakout board to make it extremely easy to undo the thumb screws right here and you can unplug this unit and again remove the entire base plate with all the electronics on it for easy serviceability. This is the difference primarily between just assembling a box for one's own personal use and doing it again in a commercial environment where you're trying to make things easier for an end user to service. Now one of the big things that you guys are probably picking up on, especially with all of my new designs, I try to make things as easy to service as possible. Um, you guys are typically not going to have technicians, let me just grab a drink real quick, excuse me, you guys are not going to have technicians to help you and service the unit. You know, I don't know if in his shop he's going to have a technician to do it, so what I do is I build in the serviceability factor in the units to make it as easy as possible. If you have to switch a drive out, it's minutes. You know, your downtime is limited to minutes. Oh, Vin, I need a drive overnight. I can do that. I need a Saturday delivery. I need it yesterday. I got a client that's got builds that needs to get done. I, I don't have time. You got it. That's what we're there to do. You know, I mean, that's, that's when I say, when I tell you the price on this unit, you will understand where all this came from. This is engineering at the base level. Everything in here is thought ahead so you don't have to. It's, it's, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. When I say simple as possible, again, right down to knowing that within two weeks you'll want to clean your fans. Nothing sucks worse than you having to go in there, mess around for three hours trying to clean the fan, thumb screw mount, you're in and out, you're done, right down to the aluminum fan filter because aluminum fan filters give you much better air flow through the case rather than them foam garbage filters that everybody seems to like. Again, seeing this done correctly totally changes the game. I think it really, it really defines what is actually done. And like I was explaining about the power supply, you can see those two knobs, you see the red one and the black one, right up there, you see them too. Those two you just unscrew, you can remove the terminals to your actual power distribution in seconds and have that unit swapped out immediately. Four screws later, you're done, nothing to it, and it can all be serviced outside the unit. Right down to wire looms being used, handmade being used on all of your power cables. You can see the breakout board underneath. Now guys, something else I want to point out that a lot of guys don't think about, and this goes back to the EMI noise issue. Look at how close I put the, the breakout board to the drives. If you notice in all my chassis, I try to keep the breakout board virtually on top of the drives. And the main reason that is, is when you have shorter wire runs, what does that mean? It means lower EMI, okay? So always think in that consideration you can see your power distribution everything is very very close to the drives I mean we're we're probably way under I would say 15 inch runs even at the max and that's for the Z axis so when you do that you're limiting your EMI think in terms of that if you're building your own system you can use a lot of what I'm doing here in technique you don't have to go crazy and use you know expensive heat shrink and stuff like that but definitely use some of the techniques that I'm talking about because it's going to save you a lot of time a lot of money and I'm telling you now if you're going to build a system for yourself or you're certainly going to buy one for yourself I'm telling you right now look for simplicity think in terms of you servicing the unit my last video was simple stupid and if you look at this chassis let me show you how simple stupid we are watch this one of the things you're going to notice online now you can see your breakout board wiring diagram okay and you can see typically online you'll get the wires and they come into the terminal block and you're trying to decipher okay what the hell does this go here and I'm trying to figure this out I don't know what that goes there let me show you what I did if you take a piece of paper and you can see this is only a three axis system this board supports up to six if you take this piece of paper and a wiring diagram is done right you can wire each drive and block out the other drives to make it very easy on your eyes to make sure you're correlated to the right component of what you're hooking up okay so if you look at X green wire direction is three and white wire step is two okay and then you just slide over and you can keep doing that because the wiring diagram was made for ease of use see I'm not looking at this I don't have to look at the whole thing I can look at just what I want to look at you can look at one drive at a time look done that's what I'm talking about that's the difference between somebody who's done this 
continuously and someone who thinks ahead because I don't know who's looking at this. I don't know if you're going to get this box and know how to wire something or even know what you're looking at inside the box or are you going to be a person that, you know, really ha is a complete novice. I don't know who's even using this system when, he, when it's actually received by the client. So I have to think ahead, you know, and I mean that's, that's the thought process behind this unit. Right down to the Weidman enclosure, this is a Weidman UL listed enclosure, okay? Like I said, no corners are cut, okay? Typical build lead time on this, again, is three weeks. This is a three-week build. I'm going to show you the exterior of the unit as far as how everything was machined. Stainless steel wall plate for our DB25, so everything's nice and clean. GX16 connector here, again, once it locks for power. Again, nothing can unplug accidentally. We also have a locking door. This door can be pivoted and locked. On top of the fact that you do have a 10 amp internal fuse. I'm going to come up here. All details, guys. On, off switch, properly labeled. Emergency stop, twist and release, of course. I'm going to just show you now the fan system. And again, there's our extraction fan. All of the uh, motor jacks for the cables are all labeled again GX16. And there's our intake fan with the fan filter, the metal mesh fan filter on top of the labeling that actually indicates to the end user, please clean me within two weeks for optimal cleanliness and the optimal airflow. And you can then once again see just the absolute mass of this NEMA 42. My hand, and I've got some big meat hooks, this, this is just amazing in size. Just an amazing motor. So again, to give you an idea of the price of this unit, this sold for just under $4,000, including all the motors, um, building the motor cables. Again, he had 30-foot, 18-4 shielded motor cables using GX16 aviation connectors. Now, guys, just to give you an idea of the aviation connectors I use, here you go. These are locking connectors. These are no joke. Plug and play, ready to go, and they lock on. Everything in this system you see is soldered and fluxed and also heat shrunk, okay? There are no corners cut. Everything here locks in. You can see all these terminals. Those are all heat shrunk by hand. And that's what yields, again, a system that I can guarantee will yield professional results. So uh, hopefully this is the defining factor for when guys ask me, you know, what, what exactly do you recommend? And like I said, you don't have to go to this level per se, but you should be looking at the organizational factor and the factor of how can I service my unit the easiest format? Because honestly, when you're alone, nothing sucks worse than when you have to dig in and try to figure out, oh my God, how do I get to that without disturbing this? And then you've got downtime and typically you'll have orders and then you're trying to fill orders. It's a mess. So think ahead. Like I said, use some of what you have here in front of you um, as far as, you know, helping you. I hope it's helped someone, especially if you're looking at starting, you know, a project like this where you're looking at building your own unit. This will give you a really good example of what you can expect if you take your time and really just try to figure out the enclosure you're working with. I can't emphasize that enough. You know, I've worked with this size enclosure for some time. I'm just trying to level this camera for you because it's just bothering me. Just give me a second. Yeah, there we go. But uh, overall, I mean, dealing with this size enclosure, it allows for a lot of room and it allows for a lot of planning. If you're using a smaller enclosure, do the same thing. Go through the enclosure, check the fit of everything, make sure everything, you know, uh, is aligned and everything that actually, you know, you want to put there is logical. You know, it never makes sense to keep your drives mounted at the top of the box with the power supply or putting the power supply right near the drives. I see that done all the time. Your drives are going to generate heat and so are the power supplies. You want to separate them. You want your drives low where it's going to be cooler in the box and you want your power supply up at top with an extraction fan because it can, it can extract all the heat. And again, air coming in, air going out. It's very simple. But again, it's overlooked virtually all the time. I have more and more clients tell me that, you know, do I really need cooling? Do I, is it really something I should think about? Guys, everything that's done in this box is done for a reason. Believe me, I'm not doing extra work unless, unless I know it gives the client peace of mind and me peace of mind knowing that it's done, you know, to the best of my ability. 
So overshooting a runway and using military grade spec heat shrink, that, that gives me peace of mind. And it's also faster because if I had to use 18 force shielded cable here, which I see done a lot, which is fine if you want to do that, it doesn't allow optimal flexibility. If you start terminating with uh, 18 force shielded, you're going to find if you've never worked with it, trust me, you're in for a treat. It, it's, it's great cable, but it does take a technique to work with it because again, as you're trimming that cable, you got to remember that PVC casing, once you go to trim it, if you go too deep, you'll cut into your conductors, and once you fracture any of your, uh, your actual casing on the wire, that's pretty much 86, so, or it should be. I have some guys that'll insulate anything with electrical tape and you're okay, you know, but for, for a professional system, I would never, ever release anything like that. It needs to be done right, and that's what this is defining. It's not just tying wires. It's not just making things look pretty. Everything in this system is done for a reason. So again, I hope this has been informational. I want you guys to, to have as much knowledge as possible. I'm there to help anybody. I'm getting a lot more messages and emails and I, I really appreciate and love the support. You guys have been wonderful. Again, this channel is all based around being positive. I don't care what your knowledge is. I'm not here to say I'm better than anybody. I'm here to say, let's educate each other and, and make each other as profitable as possible. Because again, I look at us working as a team. You know, whether you buy from me, you buy from someone else, you ask me a question. If my knowledge helps you get ahead and your knowledge can help me in one way or another, and believe me, I learn a lot from you guys. It's all about that. You know, we work together and that's that's what I'm here for. So again, my name is Vince. I'm lead engineer over at eDealer Automation. Um, the store on eBay, my store is eDealers Direct. I get asked that a lot. Um, just search on eBay for eDealers, you'll find me. Um, if you have any questions, you can message me on my email is storm2313 at gmail.com. Um, again, you can message me there, whichever one you're comfortable with, I'm fine with. Um, typically, I say message me through my email because my eBay messages are just blowing up constantly. So typically that box gets full. If that is, just message me there. Once again, I thank you all for your support, and I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.